Um, well, in many companies, there'll be no trains running at all. In some, there'll be very few running. It's unfortunate that we have to take this action. We don't want to hurt the travelling public. But after four years and virtually, for some of my members, half a decade without a pay rise, we've got no choice. As you imply there, long-running disputes. So when was the last time you had contact with uh, the rail employers or the government? Um, I think I last saw Mr Harper in December. I saw Mr Merriman once in January. I think it was January the 6th. And I haven't spoken to anybody from the RDG since they put out a deal that they knew was going to fail by putting all our red lines into it in April. Yeah, and in the meantime, they say, the government and the rail delivery group, that you're refusing to put what they describe as a fair and reasonable offer to, to your members. Uh, they are talking about this offer. They say it would increase the average driver's uh, base salary for a four-day week without overtime from 60,000 to nearly 65,000 by the end of 2023. So why aren't you putting that offer to your members? Well, they, we've been dealing with the same people for 23 years through privatisation. And we have free collective bargaining, so they could deceive or deal with the government that they wouldn't deal with us any more directly. And part of that was that and we always, our policy is made by our members that we only put deals out we recommend. We sat down with them, taking all the red lines out of the last deal, and they produced a deal with, for a 20% pay cut with all the red lines contained within it. They set it up to fail, and if you change the words fair and reasonable to lies and deceit, I think that's a more accurate picture of the offer from the rail delivery group and the government. So it sounds like you feel that no progress has been made. So what does that mean for industrial ac action? How much longer do you think it could go on for? Well, um, we're here 14 months after it first started. If we get to February of next year, uh, it'll be five years for some of our members, half a decade without a pay rise. And if it takes another five years, we'll continue going to get an equitable resolution to the situation. Do you worry that you'll risk losing public support if the action continues on into the winter? Well, I've been standing here since before 6 o'clock this morning. We had nobody negative, no one saying any bad words to us. Loads of people bibbing their horns and showing their support. The data and the polling we do so for support for 50% of the public, which is rare in a transport dispute. I think people understand in the current day and age what we're doing and why we're doing it. Today's strike coincides with the final day of consultation on plans to close ticket offices. Talk us through your opposition to those plans. Well, quite simply, it's recklessly endangering the travelling public and the staff on the railway. This is more of the government in line with what they've done to us, just going for managed decline and cutting costs at all costs. Before the pandemic, we were talking about the high increase of sexual assaults on the railway. We were talking about county lines. We were talking about acid attacks. I haven't seen society get more polite since then. I've seen it get worse. And if you want people to use your railways, it needs to be affordable, there needs to be visible presence, and it needs to be safe. Disabled people need the right to travel. Everybody should have the right to turn up and go and get on a train and get off at their destination, particularly as the taxpayers are the people funding the industry now. So this is madness of the worst kind. I think it's ill-judged, ill-conceived, and we want the companies to tell us how we can operate safely if they go ahead with these plans. And there's a March the Number 10 planned for, for later in protest at these plans. Are you going to be on that march? Uh, I was on the demonstration yesterday with the RMT outside Downing Street and I was outside the DFT with the sister trade union tester the other day and we will continue to campaign for a safer railway. OK, well, Mick Whelan, uh, General Secretary of ASLEF, uh, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.